I've been waiting so long for that. I am so excited for this and I cannot wait to upload more stuff about this game. It's going to be amazing. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you 20 upgrades in Armour Reforger from Armour 3 as one of the main questions from people interested in the game is what makes Reforger different to previous armor games? I'm going to give a disclaimer because of course a lot of what's in Reforger is subject to change and so this is just a very early, hands-on and non-exhaustive look at what I personally discovered in my playtesting. Before we get into the rest of the list, I just want to sort of curb your expectations. Armour Reforger of course is an engine demo or a showcase of what the Infusion engine is capable of. It is by no means meant to be a finished product or what Armour 4 will definitely be. It is instead, as the CEO of Bohemia Interactive has referred to as, a bridge between Armour 3 and armor 4 and so I would ask you to keep patient and to give feedback on the tracker if like me you care about the future of this franchise. I've seen a lot of people so far already complaining about the game. I think the steam reviews are, are mixed so far but I think a lot of those people are actually missing the point. Anyway I won't rant too much but just to get that out of the way. I'm very proud of the team and what they've done and so I think again it's really important for us to manage our expectations about what this game actually is. Now the toilet one actually brings me on to the next one. The performance of Armour 3 has well and truly been flushed away. With an RTX 3070 Ti and an i7-6700K, I'm getting over 60 FPS on Ultra and 45 to 50 FPS with 120% resolution sampling which is what you're seeing all of these beautiful clips recorded at. There are no real frame drops as you zoom in and out of locations. It, I mean, it's just buttery smooth and seamless. And to think that this is an early rendition of Reforger, uh, we have many, many more performance gains to come. Drewski did a really good comparison showing how much of an FPS boost he managed to get between Armour 3 and Armour Reforger. Considering that poor performance is one of the biggest gripes of the Armour fan base, this is huge. 3. There are proper animations for getting in and out to vehicles and opening the map, compass or watch, which other players can also see. This also works inside vehicles, so whilst you're driving you can pull your compass up and you can also see other players boarding larger vehicles from the interior like the Op 4's BTR, whereas in Armour 3 it was just a basic HUD overlay which was nowhere near as dynamic or immersive. This on the other hand has some serious love put into it. 4. 3D scopes and binoculars like Escape from Tarkov. So you can also free look out of a scope as you would do IRL. Uh, Armour 3 had this functionality to an extent but you could only really do it with Track IR. Now again there's much more immersion. 5. Working radios similar to TFR. So here in Reforger the VoIP system actually uses frequencies and there are long and short range radios again similar to TFR or Acre. So this massive communication overhaul is going to be huge for players who don't want to faff around with mods and TeamSpeak plugins. 6. Flowing rivers. I mean god, the water in Infusion is beautiful, but we've been long overdue rivers. They don't even work in Daisy's standalone as far as I know. So this is a big upgrade from Armour 3, where the water is just static and non-moving. Game of poo sticks anyone? I'll, I'm just going to talk a bit more so I can play these clips a tiny bit longer because, well, it just looks so good. 7 complex and furnished building interiors. This one is big for me. In Armour 3's Altus, Stratus, Tanoa and Molden, the building interiors just felt devoid of life, empty, barren places. They had no real atmosphere to them because nearly all of them were left unfurnished and untouched by civilization. Now, in Reforger, we have handcrafted, lovingly detailed and Cold War era interiors, each one with its own Eastern Europe feeling to it. 
depending on its use or location. For example, you'll get rustic, earthy textures in the alpine chalets up in the mountains, and then in the towns by the coast there will be softer, domestic decals to give the suspension of disbelief that this is, was, somebody's home. It looks incredibly good, and there are also attics. So no more of boring one or two story houses, Infusion has utilised every inch of space in nearly all of the buildings you come across, which will make for interesting combat scenarios when clearing out urban areas. 8. FOB or Supply and Logistic Mechanics which are similar to Squad or Hell Let Loose. So in Reforger you're able to actually load ammunition directly into vehicles to manually rearm them. This is again a massive jump in realism and immersion. In Armour 3 you'd simply park next to a rearm truck and that was it. Now we actually have the possibility of logistics gameplay coming through which is of course very exciting. 9. Vehicle Handling In Armour 3, your car would handle like it was on a bloody <laughs> ice rink. Now, it has weight, inertia and suspension. You can skid gracefully with handbrake turns, and when you hit other vehicles or objects, instead of exploding instantly like you would in Armour 3, it will crash somewhat realistically, roll and act way more dynamically than the vehicles ever did in Armour 3. This one will make driving much more tolerable for players, and as a result I can't wait to see what Bohemia do with the flight model in Reforger. 10. Player movement is now customisable using the scroll wheel akin to Star Citizen. I really like the realism touch here, and it, it actually helps in some situations where you need to tailor your speed according to the scenario. For example, if you're clearing a tight urban environment with lots of friendlies around, and you don't want to bump into them all the time. The movement does take a little bit of getting used to, but overall is leaps and bounds better than Armour 3's clunkiness. 11. There is climbing and mantling whilst running, which definitely looks borrowed from Daisy's standalone, but looks really smooth nonetheless. Death to vaulting, that clunky, tired, old mechanic has gotten me killed so many times in Armour 3. 12. There is now in-game mod support for users creations, meaning there's no need to alt tab or open the steam overlay to access the workshop. It's just very seamless and well built into the game, which renders it a great alternative to its steam predecessor on Armour 3. 13. As you can probably glean from these visuals, the graphics have been massively overhauled compared to Armour 3. Jackfrags in his video said the lighting was a bit too intense for him, but I would actually disagree. As someone who uses Sweet FX in Armour 3, I thought the colours looked absolutely beautiful and, and just right. It has a really photorealistic feel to it in places, whereas Armour 3 with its vanilla settings just looks a bit washed out and grey. Especially when I turn my Sweet FX off, the differences in colour between Armour 3 and Armour Reforger is night and day. 14. Foliage thickness and mid-range textures. So now it is much easier to hide in woodlands and forested areas. In Armour 3, the mid-range textures weren't really up to par, so you just stand out like a sore thumb with medium range scopes on the enemy's guns. Now camouflage is actually a semi-viable opportunity. 15. Shadows There are now long cast shadows from light sources which look absolutely stunning at night or even during the day and they just add another layer of immersion to the game world. Clouds passing overhead have similar effects as they create darker patches where they cast shadows over the land leaving some lighter areas of land where the sun can still reach. 16. The Sea Shader Oh my giddy aunt, <laughs> does it look sexy? It flows in and out, it shimmers and glistens, it rolls realistically, it is just in every way spectacular to Gortpat, even when compared to Armour 3 and its visual update 1.6 in 2016, it is nowhere near on a level with Armour Reforger's coastlines. Beautiful. 17. The other graphical point to note is the wet textures when it rains or if players enter the water, puddles will form and glisten on the road and eventually dry up 
after a rainstorm passes. Your player model will also show signs of wetness if they enter the water. Armor 3 had a mod which simulated this, but it wasn't in the vanilla game and it certainly wasn't done on a map level. Rain just looks super basic in Armor 3 vanilla. In Reforger, rain splashes off the surface of vehicle bonnets, adding that extra layer of graphical beauty to Reforger. 18. The inventory system in Armour 3 was okay, but this one is better. It harks from Daisy standalone again, where you can see your player model in the center and pick up items in the vicinity. I really like it, it's simple, as a UI should be. 19. Speaking of UI, there is no real scroll wheel! I mean, it, it's kind of there, but it's more contextual, as Dyslexy suggested it should be in his action menu video he did a while back. As he was on the uh, Reforger Regiment, I wouldn't be surprised if he was one of the people to have championed this approach with the devs. I mean, it's just so clean and intuitive. You can switch sheets, turn the engine of vehicles on and off, uh, and so much more without relying on some broken, twitchy action menu from 2001. Last but not least, 20. Another Daisy similarity is the modular approach to things like vests, where you can cannibalize a military vest, adding the pouches you need for a particular use case or scenario. Whereas in Armour 3, it was all or nothing. You either wear that vest or just get a different one. There was no gradients between the two. Now, this customizability is something that the Barbie wannabes of the community have been longing for. And that's it. My top 20 improvements I've noticed in Armour Reforger compared to Armour 3. Let me know in the comments if you think I've missed anything, which you think was worthy of a mention, and I'll see you in the next one.